Well, hey everybody, Jonathan with you once again. Welcome back to The Daily Message. The last one I filmed was in a swamp in North Queensland. Flew home yesterday back in Karen's comfy little studio. Good to be back with you this morning. Uh, housekeeping, as always, please make sure you have subscribed. Hit that subscribe button here for me. It makes a big difference. Hit the notification bell and everything else you need to know is here in the description stuff how to book me to speak, how to get free access to my book, Bridging the Gap, how to find the podcast version. Today's podcast is longer. I went really deep on the three quick topics I'm going to talk to you about. So if you want to get the podcast version, just hit the links here below and that'll work. Um, now, we're going to talk about three things. Uh, been up super early. It's like minus five, minus six degrees outside. I woke up at 2.44 a.m., just don't know why, don't know whether it's the travel, I don't know, but woke up and just thought, don't want to lie here, got up, had a good coffee, 70 minute bike race online using the Zwift platform, um, then got through my push-ups, many of you know that I've become a bit more obsessed with, uh, not obsessed, but well maybe a little obsessed with making sure I get through my routines each day. And then um, quick shower, I had another coffee, came into the studio, ready to rock, which leads to the first of the three points that I'm going to talk about today. We're going to talk about state, we're going to talk about resilience, and we're going to talk about framing. I want to put these three things back on your radar. I guess each of these probably could have made their own video, but I'll spin through them quickly just to give you some encouragement, some inspiration, some things to think about. First thing we talk about is state. State is the broad understanding of what we would call physiological state. How you feel in your body, how you feel in your mindset at any given time. The easiest way to think about state is probably to think about negative ones, right, first. Those times when we're in low energy states, we're slumped on the couch, our body's collapsed, our breathing patterns are very different. And in those low energy states, we tend to struggle to take action. We tend to struggle to get out there amongst the things of life. We lack motivation, we lack energy. Conversely, you think of the high energy states you can get in. Uh, one a good example is if you go, if you're like a sporting team, you know, if you think if you attend a grand final with your favorite sporting team, if you don't have one, just do the thought exercise with me. And, you know, it, there's two seconds to go and your team scores and they win and the whole stadium goes crazy. You know that feeling you get like, you're not sitting there at that moment kind of like this, like, yay, yay team, right? Your body moves differently, your energy is different, you're hugging strangers. It's a special moment. So you, you, you know intuitively what I'm talking about here with these low energy states and high energy states. But what I want to suggest to you is that you can create these. We create them through our choices. And as I always say, and regular listeners know I just hammer this all the time, that all you often need is activation energy. All you often need is just that first spark to get you moving forward, to get you out the door, to get you going. And then you can begin to experience better states. So I guess the, the conceptual framework that I want to give you is that positive states don't happen by accident. They happen because you pursue them. They happen because you do specific things. Like today, I hit the trainer bike. I did three, I got the push-ups done. I had a good shower. Um... I got jazzed before I came in here and sure, there's going to be times later today when my energy is going to move and, I, and our energy moves at all different times of the day, right? Circadian rhythms, hormone levels different at different times of the day, blood sugar, all that stuff, I get it. But what I do want you to start thinking about is you can do a lot more than you realize when it comes to improving your energy states. Take some responsibility for it. Don't let it happen to you. Don't let life happen to you. Like if you get up every day and you're just kind of just sitting on the couch and you're scrolling through social media feeds and, you know, some people aren't morning people. I get it. I know I'm a bit like a Labrador. I wake up and I'm like <laughs> ready to go. Someone throw me a ball. I'm not always like that. I've had to really work at it. You know, I said in the swamp video two days ago, you know, I had a very long journey with depression and I come from a background um, of depression. So I've had to work really hard to be able to say this to you, that that by pursuing high levels of fitness, by trying to be really thoughtful about how I fuel myself, what I think about, what I read, 
I've taken a lot of responsibility for trying to be more often than not in positive states. So that's the first thing. Let's wrap that up. But just, you know, the real thought I want to leave you with is that these states are not accidental. You can impact them much more than you think by doing deliberate things. Like yesterday morning, last day on the co- on the coast, woke up and as I always do, I'm like, I just want to sit here and read. I'm an introvert. I wanted to sit in the apartment and just relax for a while and read and think and but I can feel my energy collapsing so I, as I always do I jumped up got in the car drove to the beach did an 11k 10.5k run full gas on the beach it was a stunning day and um and then I swam I jumped in the ocean it was utterly freezing it was so cold um so I'll I'll, I'll cut to the video of it right now I'll show you where I was Hey guys, just uh, ran a really fast 10k, built it out uh, a sort of 10-11k run and just uh, jumped in here. Water is absolutely freezing but the uh, the effect of cold water on muscles is really good for, um, for inflammation and stuff. So got a coffee, got up and hit the day really early. Um, this is how to live this is just get up and get after it so there you go that's just after I, th- I think that was just after i'd got out yes it was and it was so cold but i tell you after a 10k run on a sunny morning when you've jumped in freezing water you're in a certain kind of state and i know you might think well that's just because you were at the beach and you could do this i get it but you can do stuff wherever you are right so let's take some responsibility for that state second point i want to talk about resilience It's just been on my heart to share with you because I've got quite a few friends at the moment going through really difficult times, really difficult times. You live long enough, right? You either live through it or you're close to people who are living through difficulty. And what strikes me that I want to say to them, and I I do say these things when we have time in, in conversation, is to remind them and to remind all of us that we are the most incredibly resilient species that it's easy to collapse into the belief that, you know, the times are tough and there's very little we can do. But I've always been really impacted by the stories of men and women who do amazing things. I'm reading a book by Ranulph Fiennes at the moment about the journeys of Ernest Shackleton, the Antarctic explorer. And you look at Shackleton's story, like you look at some of the incredible things that men and women can do, what the human body can endure And not many of us are going to go through, you know, experiences of radical survival and endurance. But it strikes me that we are much tougher than we think. We've had some friends who've tragically lost children over the the last few years. Um, Two friends particularly tragically lost kids. And and as I said on the podcast version, they're never going to fully recover from that, move on from that, you know. There'll always be the wound of grief and loss that's going to be part of their life but it's amazing to see how they've still continued into the stream of life they've still continued to live and to contribute and it strikes me that even in the most profound losses of life humans can survive and when i looked up the word resilience because i'm always interested in the background to these words resilience is first used in common usage in 1807 its scientific meaning means to kind of, it talks about how a, a, an object, when compressed, can spring back to its original shape. It comes from the Latin word resilience, which means to jump back or to recoil. So if you can imagine like a foam ball in a laboratory and they compress it, and then it, it springs back slowly to its original shape. That's resilience. So resilience is the ability to get back to normal after adversity and pressure and stress. But what I think is that we're actually different to that. I don't think we go back to our original shape. I think we can actually go beyond it. I think what makes humans special is that we can not only experience stress and pressure and difficulty and come back to normal. I think some of us can come back stronger, come back in a, in a different shape, a transformed shape, but stronger. You know, you look at, say, Lord of the Rings, right, whether you've read it, which you should have. If you've only seen the movie versions and not read the book, you are going to the naughty corner. Tell my kids that. I've I've, I've read Lord of the Rings to my son when he was little. And like, can we watch the movies? Yes, when you've read the book. Anyway, 
when Gandalf uh, falls in the minds of Moria, if you haven't seen the film, where you've been or read the book, but there's this great sense of loss and suffering and darkness. But when he returns later in the books, spoiler, if you haven't seen it, he's a transformed character. He's not the same. He didn't come back just as he was. He came back remarkably transformed. You look at the Christian motif of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection, Christ doesn't return the same. He, he definitely has the physical body and the wounds and the scars. It's always interesting to talk about that because when Christ re, you know, returns from the resurrection or appears after the resurrection, he still has the wounds. He still has the wounds, glorified wounds. But my point is that often through suffering and loss and pain, when we're not just resilient back to where we were, we go beyond it. So this is just a word of encouragement for any of you dealing with real hardship at the moment to be encouraged that you are a member of an incredible species. You are a member of a species that has you know, vast numbers of men and women, both at incredible levels, like doing world-famous things, and also just the heroic acts of hidden men and women every day, raising families under strain and difficulty. So hang in there, right? You got this. You, you, no matter. I mean, I've got some friends really dealing with hardship at the moment. Real, really difficult stuff. But I, I, I have a belief in them that they can come through. Right. That's that. We've done state. We've done resilience. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about quickly is framing. Framing refers to how we construct our understanding of time, and how we do time frames. Now. This microphone is dropping and it's driving me crazy, so I'm going to fix it again. You saw this in the last episode. This is real stuff. I'm going to fix it. All right. Now I feel better. Time frames are how we construct our understanding of time. And I was talking to a friend a few days ago who's gone through a lot of loss with COVID, a lot of difficulty, a lot of loss on the personal level, professional level, financial level. And the way they were talking about it, they were framing it with a level of permanence that I really noticed. That they were talking about using words like never, always, global statements. You might have heard of those global statements. It'll never be different. It's always going to be like this. What about, and they were talking a lot about the future. But what are we going to do when? Or what am I going to do when? And I helped them to realize that their framing was highly problematic for them. Their framing of time and reality was causing them suffering. We've all done it, right? We've all experienced something and we extrapolate out into the future and we experience this sense of things are going to be terrible for a long time. Things are always going to be this difficult. Things are always going to be this, you know, challenging and hard. And so... What I helped them to realize was we only get 24-hour blocks. It's such a simple principle, but it's one that I've started to live more and more and teach more and more. Why? Because many of you know back in 2019, I had a major accident, um, hit the concrete from two and a half meters in the air, destroyed both hands, just um, shattered both wrists completely, did a head injury, uh, knee injury, and almost died. And that genuinely taught me what I'm teaching you today, which is it helped me to realize that we can go from our life ticking along as normal to our life being over in a heartbeat. And it can happen to anyone. It can happen to you. It can happen anytime. And we don't want to accept that truth. We, th- we think it's an abstract idea. Most of us seem to live life thinking that we will die peacefully in our 80s, 90s or beyond. That's not how it goes. Now, God willing, we do. But the reality is that we do not get the guarantee of tomorrow. We do not get the guarantee of tomorrow. We get today. You get this shot. You get the next 24-hour block. And to be honest, you don't even get 24-hour blocks, right? What you actually get is, you know, the, the hours that you're awake in 24 hours. So what I'm learning is that framing can truly help us to live more deliberately and consciously and to make a greater contribution to those that we love in the wider world by just focusing on today. I don't need to worry about tomorrow's video right now because I'm doing this one. And I want to give you the best video I can right now. It's not perfect. It's not going to transform the planet, but this is me showing up today to do this. 
and then I'll be conscious during the day, I'll be thinking about things, and maybe if I get another day tomorrow, I'll have some stuff for you then. One of the benefits of framing properly is that you reduce anxiety. So our media cycle, our social media cycle is fixated on fear. World War Three, Ukraine, COVID, pandemics, whatever. We'll find something. Climate emergencies, we'll find something, right? You turn on your television, open your phone, you are going to find reasons to be afraid and to extrapolate out into the future. I don't think it helps. There's a paradox. I keep a vague eye on the future. I have a broad sense of where I'm trying to go, but I am just an evangelist now for living as consciously as possible in the 24-hour blocks that I have. Get it, get as fit as I can today. Do the best work I can today. Be the best father and husband that I can today. As imperfect as I am, I'm going to try and hit it hard today. And that's it. And there's a certain piece that comes. And I said in the podcast version, the link will be below, whoever you want to go check out the podcast version. There's a reason that Jesus said, you know, let tomorrow worry about itself. He said, tomorrow is going to have enough problems of its own. I just love that. You know, just, just his wisdom was so extraordinary, right? He's just like, guess what? Tomorrow will take care of itself, right? It's not here yet. You see, God gets to live beyond the constrictions of time and space, right? The creator is not subject to his creation. So God can exist perfectly in the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. How does he do that? I don't know. You'll get to ask him one day, but it's just God. It's, God doesn't have to explain it. We do not get to live in the three parameters of time. Not yet. Not unless... I watched Interstellar the other day with my son, and we're just like, wow, that's creepy. You could bend time, but we're not there yet. But metaphorically, some of us live in the past, don't we? You know, plenty of people who live in the pain of their pasts or the fear of their past. There's plenty of people that I, I think the majority of people now live in the future. The majority of people now live in the future. They worry about their 401ks, their superannuation, their health in the future. Will the medical system be good? Will the earth dissolve in a ball of flame? Will Russia nuke everybody? They're living in the future. It's not here. And surprisingly, as I've said in other podcasts, if the worst happens, you might surprise yourself at just how resilient you actually are. So friends, let's not live in the past. Let's not live in the future. Let's use framing effectively. Let's use framing on what's in front of us right now. One eye on the future, vague, not vague, but a sense of where you want to go, goals, you know, vision, values, what matters to you. But come on, you got today. Whatever you're worried about, let it go and be here today. If it's worrying you, then do what you can today to fix it, but let tomorrow take care of itself. All right, state resilience framing. That's it. Please make sure you've subscribed. Hit that subscribe button right now. If you haven't already done it, please do so. Hit the notification bell. Please do so. All the other links are here. I am back speaking. I was in the airport lounge a couple of days ago and I was so pumped. I was like traveling again and I was just, I was, you know, people like, you like airports? I don't like airports. I like airport lounges. <laughs> But I just felt so pumped to be back there. And I'm back speaking. I've got a big event coming up in a few days for about 700 people, which will be great. So if you want me to come and speak in your business, to your team, um, education settings, um, large organizations, church settings, the message changes because I range across so many different things, right? Um, education, peak performance, business. And I'll shape a message for anything, but it's always about liberating people's potential that's what it's about that's why i'm doing this we're going to liberate potential that's what we do so if you want to book me to speak go and check out that booking link and let me know what you need and we'll uh, we'll talk about it so that's it everybody thanks for subscribing thanks for being here i'd love you to share this with some people my name's jonathan doyle i'm going to go and enjoy this 24 hours and i'm going to have another message for you tomorrow if i'm here if i get tomorrow you know what i mean see you then